medical defenders. Para lang at least malaman ng mga tao kaya ka talaga yung mga hihintay. Kaya ka lang po kami tatapusin namin yung hanggang disertation. Ang tao! Which is uh, the motion uh, for the uh, asking the National Water Resources Board to issue a cease and desist order to BFHI so that MWSS and Manila can take them. The There's a pending motion, second there. Is there <coughs> any further discussion? May I... Uh, Deputy Speaker, uh, Speaker Rosa. something. Then we go to the vote. Okay. The motion is for um, NWRB to issue a cease and desist order on what basis? On the basis that, number one, they have no CPC. It expired. Uh, it they asked for a renewal, it was denied. They have no capability to uh, produce the water on their own. So that is the reason. That's why yeah. they should be uh, issued a cease and desist order. Now, has the CPC been denied already? Mr. Chairman, the NWRB <coughs> issued a decision in December 17, 2008, denying the application. Yes. for CPC, and then uh, uh, BFO filed a motion for reconsideration. Yeah. It was also denied uh, July yes. 2009. But I understand from the, the lawyer of CPC that they have filed an appeal. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll have to take a look at that. So whatever uh, motion that will, be, that will have to be approved in this committee hearing, we'll have to do so in compliance with the law after everything has been resolved legally. Because we're going to just come up with a, a resolution and then there will be a legal problem that could be a hit on the implementation of said motion. So my suggestion, my, uh, this is subject to the approval of the uh, Honorable Goles who has proposed the resolution that I think that has to be resolved first before with finality, before the motion could be affected, taking that into account. The motion is there, but with the criteria that uh, after the NWRB has resolved the issue with finality, I think that will not take long. Uh, Mr. So, Mr. Chairman, the, the motion is persuasive in nature. Uh, we're not acting here as a quasi judicial body. The affected parties have all the remedies available to them. Uh, even if uh, the NWRP will issue a cease and desist order, it will not prevent the affected parties from uh, taking remedial action to protect their interests. So uh, no interest will be prejudiced here. The legal uh, proceedings are still there, available to them. Uh, can I make a comment? You see, I know that, that there was a TRO that was issued. The mere fact that a TRO was issued means there is something legally that is within the, uh, the events as far as this uh, account is concerned. So I was just saying that it is, we have the, we have the resolution that is all right, but subject to the uh, law that we have, we have such thing as due process. Okay, you mo you made a motion, that's all right. But why don't we wait for the NWRB to make a final decision before this can be implemented? My position is only based on the fact that we have to avoid legal cases, suits and counter suits. And that would, uh, you know, uh, well, Chairman, I'd, like, uh, I'd like to reiterate uh, that uh, the, the position of uh, Honorable Pinarosa is an amendment, yes, an amendment. to uh, the motion of uh, the movement, uh, Honorable Roy Lagones. What's the comment of the movement? Uh, Mr. Chairman, as I stated earlier, the, the motion is for a persuasive resolution on the part of this committee. It will not in any way uh, prevent uh, the affected parties from seeking remedies. There is no 
uh, due process uh, violation here. Uh, we are not preventing anybody to take this uh, up to any other quasi-judicial or judicial body. Uh, this is a motion for a resolution on the part of a committee of the House of Representatives. Uh, this is a congressional inquiry, and as I stated earlier, a congressional inquiry can be undertaken notwithstanding the presence of a pending case in any quasi judicial, administrative, or judicial body. So I'd like to reiterate my motion. I'm sorry that I cannot accept the amendment of our distinguished uh, Deputy Speaker. May, may Mr. Chairman, uh, just yes. a point of inquiry. May we request a illegal luminary like uh, <laughs> Justice Pazaga to give us a speaker? In the light of the temporary restraining order that was issued. Uh, but there is still let's have about three minutes to recess for a while. No, just one, but very short. Okay, you make Otherwise, up. I might lo lost track. I would just want to be clarified. Whether yeah. or not the National NWRB happens to be a party regarding that the, regarding that case where a temporary <coughs> restraining order was issued. No, uh, Mr. Chairman, we were not made a party to that case. Oh. So there is no restraining order in so far as NWRB is concerned. Also, according, excuse me. Also, a statement was given that a decision was rendered sometime in December 2000. And what is the nature of that decision? The decision was a denial of their application for renewal of CPC. The decision was a denial of their application for renewal of CPC, Mr. Chairman. When did the CPC expire? Well, it expired in 2003, and they filed the application only in 2006, Mr. Chairman. So there is nothing more to extend, considering <laughs> that the period has already expired. <laughs> so it is not a case of renewal. No, because when you speak of renewal, it is a case of a new CPC. For a new CPC. That is correct, Mr. Chairman. It's so what is the tenor of the decision? I'm sorry? What's the tenor of your decision? Anong day lang at dinenay niyo? Well, uh, we denied the application for CPC on the basis that we did not find that they had the technical capability to provide the service. And this is premised on the fact that based on our evaluation, the sources within that area has already been depleted. And then uh, they undertook to enter into a bulk supply agreement with Mynilad. But then when we asked Mynilad, uh, Mynilad said that they did not agree to supply bulk water supplied to the applicant and that they are in fact uh, planning to provide individual connections. 